So we're going to talk about lump suckers in aquaculture. If you don't know what lump suckers are, they're this little fish that's on your screen right now. Uh, they look like lumps and then they have suckers on the bottom of their body that allow them to attach to things Think of like the remoras that hang on sharks. They have that and you can see one attaching to this dude's face right here They have very cute faces. They're very small uh, You know cool fish and You might think okay you might be thinking this is a weird fish to talk about right? What's so interesting about this weird little thing? It looks like sort of like a stone fish or something like that, but just a little bit cuter. But there's something very, very, very important about lump suckers. Basically, we're going to talk about how salmon farming, which is the process of raising salmon in fish systems uh, and aquaculture systems for food, has been totally revolutionized and redone uh, with the use of this little fish, the lump sucker. Uh, very cute and very, very useful. So, part one, the problem. First of all, why the fuck do we need that in the first place? Well, let's talk a little bit about aquaculture. So, if you see by these pictures, what you'll notice is there's a lot of fucking fish. Like, way too many fish just overlapping each other. Uh, and this is somewhat common in aquaculture nowadays. So, it used to be in aquaculture that... In order for fish to not be stressed, because if they're stressed, they don't grow as much. So you want to keep your fish not stressed. In order for them to not be stressed, you wanted to, you know, feed them enough. You needed the water to be good quality. They needed to have plenty of room. Um, you needed to limit stress responses as much as possible. Right? But because of modern technology and the fact that we are so, so good at regulating water quality and aquaculture farms... It's no longer that big of a deal to overstock. Basically, we can put a shitload of fish in a small container and with the magic of chemicals and various things like that, we can create these environments where there are a ton of fish in a very small space without having to worry about diminishing the water quality to the point where it's, you know, no longer acceptable for the fish. Everything can still function well. The the general idea is that Recently, we've gotten more and more into overstocking fisheries and that the general idea to take away from that is that fish are Stored really close together. They're raised really close together and that becomes a problem when you have parasites in aquaculture So there's this little thing called the water louse or water lice and Basically what it does is it attaches on the fish. It's parasitic uh, it consumes basically their flesh uh, and has pretty detrimental effects on the fish, as you can see by the salmon on the right, if left unkept. And the problem with parasites is you really can't avoid parasites ending up in aquaculture systems. No matter how well you sterilized, no matter how well you, you know, you know how, how limiting you are, you can quarantine fish when they come into the system, Parasites will find their way in. They might be on a fish that you release into the system. They might somehow get in through water transport. Uh, it's basically impossible to avoid parasites ending up in your aquaculture system. And this particular parasite is called the water lice. And for a really long time, we had a really big problem because they love salmon, right? And these environments that we just talked about, where the fish are really, really close, makes it really, really easy for parasites. Are they only harmful to fish or they affect humans as well when consumed? Well, I'll tell you one thing, Avian. No one wants to eat that salmon. Would you buy this salmon at the grocery store? Whether the lice was on it or not, there'd be lesions like this, the red blood spot everywhere. No one wants to eat that. Is it necessarily bad for you? No. It's not necessarily bad for you. But it's, uh, it's not good for you. <laughs> Uh, and people don't want to buy it anyways. And not not to mention the, the water lice consuming the flesh is actually uh, lowering their lifespan and limiting their growth. So even if they were, you know, even if it had absolutely no health effects on the people eating them, the problem is the fish won't grow as much. So it's just all around a huge problem for aquaculture and you can't avoid parasites getting in. So what you want is to prevent the parasites from causing any damage in the system once they're in the system. And there's a quote from Natural History Museum, basically just talking about how sea lice are literally affecting all salmon farms. Uh, it's been a huge issue for a really long time, okay? 
Now we're going to talk about how we used to solve it, because obviously this issue hasn't existed for as many years as we've been, you know, farming salmon without having some kind of solution. Uh, and basically, what we use is pesticides, or what we've always used is pesticides. Uh, pesticides will, at the right amounts, fish are larger, fish are hardier than the smaller parasites. They can take more you know, chemical overdose than parasites can. So you put enough chemicals to where it doesn't kill the fish, but it does kill the parasites. Uh, and obviously that has some pretty harmful effects. If you're raising fish in wild environments, uh, I mean, the, the, the pesticides are just straight up going out of the net and affected the nearby environment, which is a lot of the times when they do aquaculture on the ocean, they'll just set up a net in the ocean and put the fish in it. Yeah, chemicals bad. Uh, people don't wanna eat pesticides. That's a, that's a problem. Who the fuck wants to buy a fish that was, you know, given enough pesticides? But don't worry, it wasn't enough to kill it, just enough to kill the things on it. Um, and this is basically how we deal with this problem, because there's no other way to deal with the parasites that we'd come up with. Opinion on pesticides? Uh, in some cases, they get a bad rep, but definitely overall very negative. Uh, you definitely don't want to be consuming pesticides. But I think it is definitely a buzzword that people use for like bad in aquaculture in any kind of thing. There are some cases where utilizing pesticides is the best solution. There are some cases where it's not harmful to anybody and, you know, closed systems. Um, you know, what do pesticides taste like? Probably have you ever licked a battery? Go lick a battery. Don't do that. Don't lick a battery. But imagine what it would be like to lick a battery. That's pesticides. Anyways. <laughs> pesticides <laughs> basically been released uh, into these farms which causes harm to the fish uh, the consumer doesn't want to eat it and if they're raised in wild systems it causes harm to nearby areas not to mention even if you're in a closed system aquaculture systems don't usually use the same water even in recirculating aquaponic systems so you know even in the ideal system where the fish water that you're using is just continuously being filtered some of it is becoming wastewater you can't recycle all of the water okay so what you have to do is put some of it as wastewater. That means it goes into the local stream, uh, it goes into a drainage, a wastewater management facility, uh, and that water is going to be filled with pesticides when you're using it that way. So it's not a great solution all around, but if you have a problem of parasites that are killing all of your fish, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Like, what the fuck are you gonna do? So there's a huge problem, like I just brought up, with pesticides, and that is people don't want to eat pesticides. Even if you don't want to, you know, talk about the fact that uh, they're harmful for the fish, they're harmful for the environment, uh, they're harmful for the drinking water of people nearby these fish farms, even if you want to ignore all of those negatives, no one wants to eat a fish that is covered in pesticides. So these are just examples of, uh, you know, crackdowns, boycotts, stuff like that on supermarket chains and fish farms that were using pesticides on their fish. Uh, I'm going to be real with you guys. If it doesn't say pesticide free on your food, it, it, people are using pesticides, right? But then people realize they get upset. They freak out, right? So people, this is, that's basically what happened. Someone wrote a news story. Everybody freaked out. They've been eating pesticides for decades. News story. Everybody freaks out. And for good reason, you don't want pesticides in your food, especially not at that level, especially not unchecked. More than anything, you do not want pesticides unchecked, okay? Pesticides in limited amounts for the right purposes to make the farm more efficient can be very, very good. However, when aquaculture facilities are not held accountable for the amount of pesticides that they are dumping into the you know, local drinking water and the amount of pesticides that are building up in their fish, that's a problem, okay? So... In comes the cutest of boys. And you might be thinking, this isn't a lump sucker. You're right, this is a wrasse. And this is one of our recent solutions uh, to salmon farming and to water lice and water louse. Because there's this thing called wrasse or cleaner wrasse, and their whole specialty is eating the parasites off of other fish. Uh, it's W-R-A-S-S-E. They have uh, symbiotic relationships with a lot of other animals like sharks. Uh, where the shark will say, hey, I won't eat you, just eat the shit off my back, and we'll leave each other alone. And so the sharks come in and they stop. The wrasse, you know, give them a little sucky sucky. The sharks go off to do their business. 
and uh, very helpful. So for a while, we were using these uh, these RAS in farms because RAS were able to do the thing that we needed. They were able to, without the use of pesticides, take away the parasites <laughs> from, uh, from the salmon in the farms. And it served as a great solution until we realized something. Boom, it's winter. And let me tell you about something about RAS. They're generally a reef fish and reef fish don't like the winter, not in, uh, you know, northern climates. And so all these farms that are utilizing these RAS to clean the salmon, and they're like, oh yeah, great, we don't have to deal with pesticides anymore, we have RAS to, to clean off our fish now. And then the winter came, and all the RAS died. <laughs> or they realized, if they were intelligent enough, we need to keep the water warm, and then they have to use one of these, and this is called a heater. This is a water heater. And let me tell you, what running a water heater for a small pond, for a singular tank, not that much electricity, not that expensive, you know, initial cost for the heaters. Running a water heater for an entire aquaculture system will cost you more than the actual amount that you will make by raising the fish. There is essentially no sustainable way to heat that large amount of water unless you live in a climate like Hawaii or something like that where the water's warm, you know, all times of year. Lucky, lucky for the, you know, the aquaculture farmers, you don't actually need warm water for salmon. Salmon don't care. Salmon are, are willing to live in cold water. This is, you can see dead of winter snow in the background. This dude just caught a fucking salmon. It's probably 10 degrees in that water because you can do that. Salmon don't care. Unfortunately, wrasse do. Ras do care and they die in the winter. So the logical next step is to find a fish that can serve the same purpose as wrasse, eating the sea lice, without dying in the winter. And that is where our best friend comes in. The lump sucker. This is the intake of a single lump sucker in an aquaculture system. My head's blocking some of it, but these are sea lice. Each one of these is one of the parasites that they're trying to get rid of. Here's a lump sucker sucking off the back of a trout. Here's a bunch of cute ones looking at you. Yep. Okay. Everyone's... Fr I thought you were going to think it was cute. Why is everybody freaking out? Why is everybody disgusted? I thought you were going to... Well, it... Okay, everyone's freaking. Well, no, it was supposed to be, you were supposed to like this. Oh, you don't like the lice. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, no, yeah, lice are gross. And that is why the cutest of cute boys has shown up. And he has eaten all of these lice for us. He got rid of them from all of the salmon in the farm. Say thank you, Mr. Lumpsucker. <laughs> and... Now we have a solution that has been going for a couple of years now. <laughs> now we have a solution that has been going for a couple of years now. We have a fish that we can keep in the aquaculture system, be completely sustained on the things that on the lice that it's eating in the aquaculture system as long as there are lice present. Uh, they can do complete cleanses of the aquaculture system. It doesn't really cost anything extra because you don't have to heat the system. You don't need increased filtration. They're not picky at all. And, uh, yeah, that is pretty much the general idea. They have, uh, revolutionized salmon farming. Salmon farming and salmon in general have become significantly cheaper as a result of the fact that we no longer use, need to use a shitload of pesticides and healthier as well. We no longer need to sustain RAS if you don't want to use pesticides, which is never sustainable. We just throw one of these cute little guys in there, make sure they're fed and happy. And uh, they'll do the job for us. Pretty cool. Uh, and just to end off, we'll look at a video of some cute lump suckers. Because, you know, I fucking love them. Look at that lump sucker's sucking on the other lump sucker. He's riding him. These are a bunch of them probably getting ready to go into an aquaculture system. Adorable.